This is Mr. Rizzo from the Clarence High School Guidance Office. I'm going to talk a little bit about the college application process. This is a relatively brief overview of what students need to do to make sure that all components of their application reach the college in a timely fashion. The screencast is appropriate for students as well as parents who want to be involved with the applications. I'm not going to go into the small granular details of the Common App or other applications. There are lots of resources out there for that. This is meant to just give you an understanding of the different pieces of the application and what the student needs to do to get them all sent out. On the screen is a brief outline of what I'll be covering. If you're not using the Common App, which is completely okay depending on the schools that you're applying to, feel free to skip over this section and go straight to the Navians portion. To start off, we'll go to the Guidance portion of the high school website. You can find some college planning resources here. The first item is the presentation we gave to students through English classes in late September. A copy of the PowerPoint as well as a YouTube clip of the entire presentation is available for your review. It gives an overview of the entire admissions process, not just the application. Just below that is the link to the application checklist. Uh, the checklist is a reference document and I won't, go into, I won't go through every single piece of it, but just know that it's there. What I would like to go into a greater detail on, though, is the College Application Triangle of Doom. We have a little fun with the name, but really, we're just trying to show the different parts of the application here. There are parts that must come from the student and parts that must come from the school. We, the school, need a little help from the student in order to get those pieces sent out on their behalf. Everything needs to get here, obviously. To college. Everything's got to get to college. Anytime they receive a piece of information on a student, they put it into a digital folder, even if it's just a, even if it's a hard copy of something, it'll get scanned and then uploaded into the digital folder. All parts of the application don't need to arrive at the same time. It's okay for the test scores to get there a week after the application's been submitted or even a few days before the school report. All the school really cares about is having the overall application completed before the deadline. Now let's take a look at the students' responsibilities first. They need to complete their portion of the application through one of the different, uh, uh, through one of a few different methods. The common application, which is accepted at nearly a thousand schools, the SUNY application, which is accepted by all SUNY schools, or the school's own application on their website. This usually applies to either private schools or community colleges. This means they'll go to one of those websites, create an account, and fill out the entire application usually over a few days or weeks, and then they'll submit. The information is going directly from the student to the college. So from the student directly to the college with no middleman. The other piece of the application that the student is solely, solely responsible for are the test scores. Most colleges require standardized test scores, which means the SAT or the ACT. Those test scores generally need to be sent directly from the testing institution. The student should go to the college board or ACT website and send the scores to the colleges they're applying to. This is the last piece of the application and that the student is solely responsible for. They need some help on the other pieces. Now the counselor is responsible uh, for sending supporting documents like the transcript, letters of recommendation, and the school report. We use Naviance to do that. That's our delivery method. You could look at Naviance as like our FedEx, while Common App or the SUNY app is like UPS for the student. It all gets to the college, just different delivery methods. Now the student needs to open up the pathway for us in Navians right here. Uh, that's so, so that we're able to send materials on their behalf. But now don't worry, I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. When you think about it, this just makes good sense. We shouldn't be able to send your materials to any school across the country really without your, your consent and permission. When it comes to teachers letter of letter, teacher letters of recommendation, there are a few additional steps. First, the student needs to speak with the teacher in person. Once the teacher agrees to write a letter, the teacher needs to invite them through Naviance. And again, don't worry, I'll show you how to do this. The teacher will upload the letter into Naviance, where the counselor will then submit it on their behalf. That's how all the pieces get to the school. Now, let's dive into the Common App. For starters, it can be a huge time saver if you're applying to many schools. However, you shouldn't automatically default to the Common Application. Say you're applying to three SUNY schools 
and one local private school. It probably makes more sense for you to use the SUNY app and the private school's own application on their website. The Common App is lengthy, so doing two shorter applications might actually be a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. We do have a Common App reference guide that's linked on our website right here. And uh, this is what it looks like. It's 65 pages long, so it's not really something you're going to sit around and read for fun, but it is really helpful when it comes to questions that pop up along the way. Uh, it's a very good resource. And uh, moving on to the Common App, this is what it's going to look like when you log in. Now, I'm not going to go through all the different pieces of the Common App. You know that you need to complete the entire application, and then you have to submit it. I'm going to talk specifically about what you need to do in order to match with Naviance. The two systems end up working together, Naviance and Common App. There are certain sections of Common App that need to be completed before you can match with Naviance. All that means is that, to do, is that the two sites talk to one another. And once they talk to one another, then that essentially allows the counselors to submit stuff on your behalf. Remember, your portion of the application and the school's portion of the application can be worked on simultaneously. You don't need to necessarily have to finish the application, hit submit, and then come see us to send the transcript. You certainly can, but again, it's okay if all the pieces arrive at the college at different times. As you complete the common application, you're looking for green check marks right here. You'll know a section's uh, complete when you see the check mark. Now, in order to uh, complete what you need to in, in Naviance, in order to match, you need to complete the education section. So this section right here must be completed. The section requires you, hold on just a second. Under grades, you'll see right here. Um, yeah, this section requires you to know the size of your class, rank, and GPA. Now, this information can be found on your unofficial transcript which is uploaded into Naviance, and I'll show you where to find that when we move on to the Naviance portion of the screencast. The unofficial transcript is for your reference only, but it will help you complete the section. The other piece of the Common App that needs to be completed before you can match is the FERPA waiver. That can be found under My Colleges once you've added a college. It's right there. You can find it here. So what this does is it gives us, the school, your permission to send materials on your behalf. They also ask if you want to waive your right to see these materials at a later date. It's obviously up to you, but we generally recommend waiving that right. By doing so, it signals that colleges, to colleges, uh, that recommenders are being completely candid and not withholding any information. If someone agrees to write a letter for you, they're not going to write bad things, so there's really no need to worry. We do have a brief guide to the FERPA waiver on our website if you have any further questions about the uh, uh, about it. The last thing I'd like to address on the Common App is pretty specific and will only apply to a small number of you, but it's common enough. Uh, it's a common enough situation that I figured I'd address it here. All school recommendations. Uh, must go through Naviance. However, there are some of you who might want to submit an extra letter of recommendation from, say, an employer or someone outside of Clarence High School. If so, this is where you'll do that in the Common App. You'll invite an other recommender. You invite them here, you plug in their email address, and then they'll receive an email with instructions on how to upload the letter. In, ad in, in addition to inviting them, you need to assign them to each school you want their letter to go to. So I would assign uh, the, um, the person after I've already invited them right here. Okay, that should do everything. That should do it uh, for everything related to the Common App. Now, moving on to Naviance. Students aren't actually submitting anything to colleges in Naviance, but there are some things that you need to do here that allow us, the school, to send things for you. Students should know their Naviance username and password because it was given to them last December in their red college planning folder. If they don't, they can always stop by uh, to see Mrs. Cole in our office. The login screen is linked on the guidance homepage. 
Now, it's not your email, right? Uh, I know that can be a little confusing, but there's no way for us to change how this appears, unfortunately. I mentioned your unofficial transcript a few minutes ago when I was talking about the Common App. You can find it under the eloquently named My Stuff uh, section. It should be under Documents Shared with Me, and it would be right there. Again, this is just a reference that will show you your diploma type, GPA, and class rank when you look at it. Now, moving on to the college piece. You want to go to colleges I'm applying to. If you use the Common App, this is where you're going to need to match right here. You'll match the account. If you didn't use the Common App, I promise this will be real quick, so don't tune out. What you're essentially doing is allowing Common App and Navians to talk to each other. So you'll fill in the email address. You'll fill in your date of birth. And again, the email address is the email address that's associated with your Common App account. Uh, you'll click Match, and then at that point you should be all set. It'll actually populate all the schools that you're applying to right here. So if they're listed in Common App, right here, then those schools will end up populating here. Now, if you're not using Common App or you're applying to schools that don't take the Common App, you need to add them individually. And you can do that using the plus button right here. You'll fill in the college's name and how you're submitting the application, regular decision, uh, early decision, that sort of thing. And then you'll be submitting the application uh, directly to the school, most likely. Um, you don't need to send a transcript request. In fact, uh, you shouldn't send a transcript request electronically. Counselors do not look at them. Before we actually send anything out, we require students to meet with us personally. Now, this might seem like an extra layer of work for the student, but that extra step really does ensure that nothing is missed. We head off a lot of possible errors by meeting with students. We're happy to answer all kinds of questions over email, but we can't honor the email requests uh, for transcripts. It's got to be done in person. Now, the final piece of Naviance uh, that students uh, that involve students is letters of recommendation. Students generally need only one or two letters of recommendation if they actually need any at all. Uh, there are many colleges that don't require letters. You can find out what your school requires before asking teachers. You absolutely should actually. Um, when you know how many letters you need, you should ask the teacher in person before sending an electronic request. Once they agree to write for you, then you can come to Naviance and invite them right here on this page. It's relatively simple and straightforward. You go to add a request, you select the drop teacher from the drop down menu, uh, and then send it to all future schools. Counselors are the only ones who are going to transmit the letter to college, so we'll make sure that we know, uh, we'll make sure we know from you which letter should go to which college. Uh, in the text box, you should type out a thank you note to the teacher. You might want to let them know why you chose them and what you liked about their class. You can click Submit and you'll be all set. Now, this right here is a record of teachers you've requested to write for you. If it says requested, you know they're still working on the letter. When the status changes to in progress, you'll know they've uploaded the letter. I think it would make more sense really for them for it to say uploaded, but you know, what, what, what do we know? Um, finally, it will say either sent or complete when the counselor transmits it to college. Now, that wraps up the Naviance portion of the screencast. Let's talk a little bit about timeline. First off, know what the deadlines are for all the schools that you're applying to. Make sure you leave counselors and teachers at least 10 business days to complete their portion of the application. Many colleges require a counselor-specific letter of recommendation. If that's the case, your counselor might need to fill, you, uh, fill out uh, might need you to fill out a form that helps them write for you. There's some variation in what the counselors need, so be sure to meet with your counselor individually to find out. Early decision or early action students will likely have either a November 1st or November 15th deadline. Make sure you leave people enough time to do their part. Other than that, ideally, you should strive to have all of your applications finished by Thanksgiving. 
that's a good target deadline to shoot for and is still relatively early on in the application cycle. It's better to apply early if the school uses rolling admission, but if it's regular decision where there's a set deadline, you don't really get bonus points for being early. All right, this wraps up most of the screencast. I hope that I've covered all the major points. Please reach out to your counselor if you have any questions. We're here certainly to be a guide for you and to help you through the process. Use us as much or as little as you need. You guys are the ones climbing the mountain, but we certainly know the, uh, the way. The one last thing that I would say is uh, sometimes you might get emails from colleges or notifications from colleges that they haven't received all the parts of your application. We keep really good records of when things were sent and occasionally things kind of cross somehow in cyberspace or uh, the college might not have uploaded the documents from Naviance yet. We've got pretty good da date stamped records of everything. So if there is a question, don't worry. Call us, contact us, email us, whatever you need to do. We're, we're always able to sort things out if something does come up. So uh, before you, you panic and, uh, uh, and, and get completely uh, worked up and nervous, take a few deep breaths and contact us because usually we're, we're able to sort all of these issues out. And with that, uh, I think that's, uh, that's it. Good luck and hopefully we'll be seeing you guys soon.